Hello, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and ta-da, the middle of the banana quilt. The banana quilt is from the Perfect 10 book, and these are using layer cakes, so all of the quilts have sort of fun uh, food names, like the candy, cotton candy quilt, the coffee quilt. This is the banana quilt, like a banana bread or a banana cake, since it's layer cake friendly or uses layer cakes. So what I did, uh, I told you the other day, I had a little bit of a hack. I used all the same width sashing versus two sashings, like the book, two sizes. And then I put these little cornerstones in to get that radiating effect, to really lock in that radiating effect. So I have the center done. And this is the fabric I bought for the backing and I'm going to steal some of it for the binding, for the border rather. I'm gonna put a border on it about like, I don't know. This is a wide print, so I'm not sure. Here, I'll show it to you. It's so gorgeous. Look at this, look how beautiful. It also came in a background of red and green and gray and that sort of bluish teal that's up there in the top corner, that sort of greenish blue. Uh, but anyway, this is what I'm going to put a little bit of a border on there. Not much, maybe three inches. We'll see what that looks like. I don't, th it's a wide print, so I don't want to chop it up too much. So that was a very fast project, very forgiving, very easy. So the Perfect 10 book. I love it. I love it. What's interesting to me is the quilts look so different once you put them in fabric because the book is done in solids so that it's not, you know, fabric specific, which means that your quilt is going to turn out so much better, in my opinion, <laughs> better when you have fabric in, in the design. So there we go. And let me show you two of my crumb blocks so I can take them off the wall here. And these were done uh, over the past couple of days. I don't remember if I showed you the green one or not. I think I may have showed it to you in progress. So there's the green one. And then I did this with some of uh, Christmassy type prints. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. I may still add another little section on it. Okay, so today is old school block of the month day. Uh, Katie is the designer for this month and she is from the UK. Uh, I am friends with Katie and the uh, fun thing that she does in addition to designing is she's also really into featherweights and featherweight maintenance and if you're in Europe she sells parts uh, you know she ships parts for your featherweights and, so, and she also does online workshops so if you want to take a workshop about your featherweight Katie's the one to go to. All right, we're gonna take this down and put up the old school blocks. Katie Cameron of The Littlest Thistle is the November designer and her block, this is my version of it, and I'm gonna put her version up here. Her block is the bear paw with a double bear paw, like the baby bear paw and the mama bear paw. Katie's business is based off of when she first started Littlest Thistle making delicate, small, intricate mohair bears, three-dimensional bears. So this is totally perfect for her. Isn't that dar darling? This is so cute. So I don't know where it'll go. I don't know if I'll switch a bunch of these around eventually and, you know, or whether I'll just do the last two on the bottom. Not not totally sure where I'm gonna go with that yet, but let me just show you how I figured out the fabric for this one. With only two more blocks to go, my fabric selection is pretty tight, but I have plenty. It doesn't look like a lot, you could sort of panic, but there is plenty of fabric here for two quilt blocks, so let me show you. So I kind of sorted it, went ahead and, I also did just a screen print of her pattern with the cut sizes so that I could have it to keep here. So I've got lots of this uh, peach, which will be in the sashing. So, and I, I actually have peach in three of the blocks. So I think I'm done with putting peach in the blocks. I wanna use up this stuff. I also have this piece, which I could use either as a border or part of the backing. So I think I originally got it because I was thinking I'd put a border on there but uh, I'm not sure now if I will do that. I might just use it for the backing and end it where it is. 
So the there's like rust color. There's only a little bit of rust color. And I actually think this block might be pretty good for having the rust in it. You know, using the rust up. Get rid of it. There's only this much gold. So I don't know. I might just save that and see how the next block is. There's plenty of lights here. Lots of lights. So I, in a pink. So I want to use at least two of the lights for like I think for out here and then for in here just just use these guys up like one is this sort of tan and these this was a layer cake and then I had some other fat quarters uh, but this layer cake this one I have enough of it I think I could do as a background for one of them and it gives definition because it's got a more tan on it then the black I did have the I bought a bigger chunk of this black so that I could use more of it. And then the other two blacks, there's you know, not a whole lot, but I might, I might use like the dark points. Her block is so darling uh, with all those fabrics. I just want to have those fun fabrics. <laughs> I have those, some of those, I have that bare, uh, but I might do the dark in there. And there is a little piece of this, but if I don't need to use it, I don't think I'm going to. So that would mean, let's take a look. If I was going to audition and have like the wider um, part, so like this part here, all in this tan, then I could do black points against it like that. I could do black points. And then down uh, in this big square, I could do the rust. So that would kind of be this portion. And then I'd have to find, okay, what do I do for out here? Do I want to do it all black and rust? Uh, would there be enough of these, of this rust or that one to do the outer points? And then on the outside, I've got these two lights, which I have more of this one. I have more of that one because, you know, these are going to be a little bit bigger block. So that would be the rust, the black, the tan, and just kind of do this and see how, see how it goes. So as you can see, I ended up changing and putting this print down here. I don't know, it just gave it a little bit more pizzazz to put that floral down here. So this is a super fun block. It's really easy. I could see like a whole quilt out of these. And I'm loving all the yummy colors mine's turning out. So fun. So I do have two other things uh, that I wanna go over today. One is I wanna tell you about my surgery coming up for my nose. Yes, I finally have an update on that. And I also have my website today where you can get the link over to Katie. Uh, I have also the Virginia Quilt Museum put out this the four interviews I did with the, four or five, five interviews I did uh, as one video with the museum directors about the love quilt. Uh, I think the love quilt's there. Um, anyway, I'm gonna link that video. I'm gonna put that video in my website today. So it's a great thing to listen to while you're sewing and you just wanna have some history and some backstory of the Virginia Quilt Museum. It's quite fun. Okay, let me tell you about my nose. <laughs> So I finally had an appointment with the surgeon who will do the reconstruction part, the plastic surgeon who will reconstruct it. It's, I have basal cell carcinoma, a spot on my nose on the side here. And they are, there are different varieties of this. Uh, some of them are as he described as what you see is what you get. You get see the little spot, they just remove it and you're done. Lots of people have this, lots of people get it. This type of cancer doesn't spread. It doesn't, um, you know, it's slow growing. So, but there, but the basal cell, there are several types of it. I do not have the easy one. The see it, what you see is what you get. I have one that's different. Uh, it's a very tiny spot on the surface. He was actually very impressed that I realized my skin looked weird and went in to see the doctor. He said that was fabulous because it's not very easy to see this one. Uh, but underneath the surface of the skin is where it could have, uh, it could be much larger uh, and often is. And it's on my nose, lovely. <laughs> so. What they have to do is they'll do a procedure called MOHS, M-O-H-S, 
and this is also a very good procedure where they remove layers until it's cancer free. They check it, they remove a layer, check it, remove a layer, check it. So depending on how far down they go and how much it has to be removed, then there will be, re you know, this, the hole in my nose will have to be fixed. Uh, it might be very small where they stitch it up. It might be much bigger to the point where I have to have cartilage removed from my ear to rebuild part of the nose. None of this they know until the day of surgery, until it happens. They can't tell till they remove it all. And the second, so I'll be seeing two surgeons, one to remove it and one to build it back up. All in the same day, and this will happen uh, November 23rd, which is two days before Thanksgiving. So that's, uh, you know, less than two weeks from now, about a week and a half. Uh, and it will, I will most likely be there all day. So that means, you know, it's a bit of a process. Uh, it's something that has to be done. Um, I'm very happy to get it sooner rather than later because he said often it can be up to three months that you have to wait due to having two surgeons and schedules and my schedule, which, which I was like, I don't have a schedule. I can come whenever, <laughs> just get me in to get it over with. Um, so there will be stitches. He said my face will be swollen and I'll most likely have a black eye because he says when you're working around the eye, that's you know going to happen. Uh, so there you go. I won't know until all of that is done or as you know, I, I will know how, how much they had to remove after the first surgeon and then the second uh, person will fix it up. And that's just, that's, that's what I'm doing in, uh, <laughs> A week and a half. That's <laughs> but I wanted to give you an update because it's, it took a while to get the appointment with the second doctor to chat about it and then to um, you know have the, the scheduling done. So there you go. That's an update on the nose stuff. And today, hopefully, if you're sewing along, you can make your bear paw block, which is so darn cute. Okay, I gotta I gotta end it with a happy block picture at the at the end here. So cute, I love it. <laughs> okay, thank you friends. Thank you for all your support and your help and being with me on all of this crazy journey that we all go through. So I love you, Mwah. see you online.